use the F table to find the critical value for the given scenario. So we have some sample data, we have a hypothesis, and we have a significance level. So first thing, let's go through our steps again, getting a critical value for the F test. So whenever you're doing a hypothesis test about the population variances of two samples or two populations, we're going to be conducting an F test. The important thing to remember about an F test is when we set up our test statistic for that test, we want to make sure that the population that, or the sample that has the larger sample variance goes on top. So we're going to identify this value here, this value that's the larger of the two, sample variances. We're going to identify that as being our numerator. So this means that the numerator degrees of freedom is going to be this value minus 1, which will be 45. And I'm going to put a little note here that this is the numerator, right? And then for the denominator degrees of freedom, we're going to let this be that value. So the degrees of freedom for the denominator will be 29. Okay, so at this point, when we go to our table, we'll be armed with those values and we'll look up the values based on that. So let's go over the steps again one more time though. So let's determine the number of tails in alpha. So we're going to look at our um, information here and look at our claim first to figure out how many tails we'll be dealing with. With a not equal to here in our claim, we're going to assume that we're dealing with a two-tailed hypothesis test, right? And because it's two-tailed, we're going to take this alpha and we're going to divide it in two. And so we're going to actually use alpha divided by 2 for the problem. That alpha divided by 2 will be 0 0.025. Okay, so there's our alpha divided by 2, which will go to that table now as a result, because in step 2 it says determine the table to use by considering alpha, right? So, or alpha divided by 2 for the case of a two-tailed test. So we're actually going to go to this table instead of the 0.05 table, and that's because of the two-tailed nature of the test. That's very important because a lot of people will make that mistake. They'll overlook the fact that it's a two-tailed test, and they'll look up their critical value on the 0.05 table. But that's not correct. Because it's a two-tailed test, we have to chop this alpha in half, and we have to look at the 0.025 table instead. Okay, now once we know we're going to that table, we're going to use the numerator degrees of freedom for the top row. So we're going to be looking up 45 in the top row, and we'll be looking up the denominator degrees of freedom in the left column. So we're going to look up this 29 in the left column of the table. So essentially when we go to the table, we'll be looking up this. F of 0 0.025, that just means we're going to go to the 0 0.025 table, we're going to look up degrees of freedom 45, comma, 29. Okay, so let's go to the table now and go look up these degrees of freedom values so we can find our F value from the table. Okay, so I'm on the 0.025 F table, and I want to find numerator degrees of freedom 45. I don't see that here, though, so I'm going to go to my next page and try to find it there. Now, when I come over here, I see there's a 40, and then there's 60. There's no 45. So let's go down and see the two numbers that we can find in the 29 row for denominator degrees of freedom. So when I come down, I see that there's two numbers. In the 40 column, there's 203. And in the column next to that, there's 1.96. So these are the two possible values. Well, I always choose the more conservative value, the larger value. So I'm going to go with 2.03. And incidentally, of course, 40 is a lot closer than 45. So even though I don't have 45, I'd rather choose 40. But not only that, it's because this value is larger, and I always take the more conservative value, which means the larger value. So I'm going to choose 2.03 as opposed to 1.96. So that's going to be our F critical value here, 2.03.